look, I'm not going to speak about this as if this is my experience exclusively or if this is just something that I, that, that, that I, I'm the only person that's ever experienced this because my experience is so much more superior than yours. You know, I'm going to speak about this as if it's our experience because it is. If you're my age, I'm 31 years old or older or, you know, in the same generation as I am, then you understand exactly what I'm about to talk about. All right. Or, you know, if you're in any any generation, I mean, everybody understands the concept of a, a liar. And I don't even really think lying is the appropriate definition of the word, definition of the behavior that I'm about to talk about. All right. So at my job, right, I've always kind of racked my brain over the over certain people who volunteer to brag. You know, these are people, as soon as you meet them for the first time, they, they, they try their best to impress you with their accolades, their accomplishments, things that they're doing, places places where they're going, places where they've been. You know, um, one thing that I notice about these people is they never come from the state that, that you're in. You know, like they're never from here. They're always from a big city, a major metropolis, and they just so happen to be here. You know, it's just these people. They, 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 it's like these kind of people. You know, if you if you're talking about ice cream, for example, and you're saying, "Man, I love vanilla ice cream," they're gonna interject into the conversation and say, "Oh yeah, yeah, I love ice cream too." You know what? I actually used to own an ice cream company. Or if you're talking about a particular area, giving directions to somebody, and somebody's ask, asking you, "Hey, where do you live?" and you say, "I live on uh, such and such street," and then that person might interject and say. Oh yeah, I got three rental houses on, on such and such street. I'm, I'm renting out three properties right on your street. I know exactly where that's at. So, and, 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 and you know, these kind of people, I'm starting to bump into a lot now. You know, like, like for example, well, in my place of work, there's a girl. And she says that she's from Orange County, California. And she's like a bartender, right? So... This, this this customer, he was a high-level business guy, high-level, I mean, high-powered. And uh, he was speaking to this bartender, and he was basically saying, hey, I'm from Orange County, I'm down here on business. And she said, oh, I'm from Orange County, too. And I overheard her say that. And I've actually spent a lot of time in Orange County. I spent a lot of time in the Inland Empire, which is right next to Orange County. And I spent a lot of time in Southern California in general. I never speak about it because it's nothing to speak of. I mean, America is a place where we all have access to. It's not like only certain people are allowed to move around the 50 states. We all can travel freely, so it's not really that big of a deal. So I go up to her and I'm like, hey, I heard, I overheard you say that you were from Orange County. I said, I didn't know that. I thought you were from here, Virginia. And she was like, no, I'm from, I'm from California, but, you know, my family lives here now. And I said, where, where are you from in Orange County? I've, I've actually got some friends that live in Huntington, Huntington Beach, you know, and I've got some, I've got a couple friends that actually live in a, like, a, a town called Menifee, you know, and I spent a lot of time in the Inland Empire, you know, San Bernardino County, Riverside County, which is right next to OC. And she had no idea what the hell I was talking about, you know, and she was, just, and she said, um, and she just basically found an excuse to stop talking about it. I'm like, where do you live in Orange County? You know, I mean, Orange County is one of the richest counties in California, first of all. And it's just, the black population is really not that big. So to meet black people from Orange County, it's like, you know, it's like a, a unique thing. So I asked her, I said, hey, you're really not from Orange County. Because you have no idea what I'm talking about. You can't even name three towns in Orange County, can you? And then she got upset with me and she walked off. And I was like, why would somebody lie about where they come from? I mean, I'm from Richmond, Virginia. I, rep- I mean, I, I, I'm honest about it. I don't see the problem in it. I love my city. I love my upbringing. Wherever I am in the 50 states, I'm always proud to say, hey, I'm from Virginia, man. I'm from, you know, from the southeast. That's where I'm at. You know, I, I never felt the need to lie about where I'm from. I mean, why? <laughs> I mean, why? I don't understand that. And then there was another guy that I work with, right? And this guy was like a contractor that cleaned. He wasn't a part of, like, I'm, like the, the workplace is a hotel. We got a housekeeping staff. But this guy wasn't a part of the housekeeping staff. This guy was actually a contractor that came from a company called Jan Pro, which is a contracting cleaning service. And basically, they hired him to clean the building overnight because we didn't have ho- 
housekeepers overnight. This guy told me, I was speaking to him about the death. I was telling him that I had a family member that died, right? And he told me, oh, I got a family member that died too on the same exact day as yours. And I said, no kidding. And that made a, and that made me kind of interested in this guy. Like, hey, this guy might be cool. You know, we got something that we can relate to, relate on, right? And then um, he was telling me about the whole Jan Pro thing because I've heard of Jan Pro, but I didn't understand the concept of it. And he was explaining to me that he goes to these various businesses and he negotiates the contracts. And he was bragging about the fact that, because I was like, hey, we have a housekeeping staff here that cleans up all day, so you really don't have much work to do because nobody's here is dead overnight from 11 to 7 at night. And he was like, yeah. He said, I make sure when I when I negotiate these contracts that I negotiate contracts in businesses that are clean. I don't want to you know, get a contract at a business that's really, really dirty because I don't want to do that much work. And he was just bragging, you know, like, hey, if I'm going to get a contract, I'm going to get a contract at a place that requires minimal cleaning. You know, all I got to do is just clean, clean the windows in the bathroom, the mirrors in the bathroom, and wipe off the toilets, and bam, I'm done. That's the only kind of work that I'm looking to do. And I said, that's cool, man. And then I actually ran into his boss because basically he was a liar. You know, his boss came to me one day and he was asking everybody in the hotel about the performance of this guy, right? And I said, hey, I thought that this was his building. I thought that this guy owned his own company, his own cleaning contract service, but it's all his. You know, I, I mean, I really didn't understand the mechanics behind it, but I thought this was his cleaning company. Why are you his boss? And he said, look, it doesn't work like that way. He said, this guy is an employee of me. He said, I work for Jan Pro. I'm what you call the franchiser. He's the franchisee. He's a unit franchisee, meaning I negotiate the contracts, I get the buildings, and I lot them out to the franchisees. He said the master franchiser gives the work to the franchisees. He doesn't have absolutely anything to do with the work that he does. He doesn't have anything to do with the contracts. He doesn't even get a chance to pick where he's going to work. We tell him where to work. And he said, I come here every couple of months to see his performance to determine if he's going to stay here or not. Because if his performance is subpar, I'm kicking him out and putting, putting somebody else in his place. And I said, wow. So this guy lied to me about having his own business, negotiating his own contracts and all. And even he lied about the family member that died. Because come to find out, I'd seen him another time and he was telling me that he was going to her a party of hers. And I was like, I said, I thought you said that that family member died. And I was, and he said, what, what you mean? I said, you told me that your aunt died because I told you my aunt died. And he said, no, my other aunt died. And I just don't understand why do these people do these things. And I'm not going to try to, I mean, I actually do understand it. It's, it's a sociopathic trait. They're called uh, narcissistic sociopaths. And narcissistic, they're called narcissistic socio, sociopaths. Paths and they're called pathetic sociopaths. And these people lie, pathetic sociopaths lie just to survive. They lie because it's a, it's, a, it's a survival mechanism to them. They lie because that's how they survive the day. And in their mind, that's how lying is the best way to survive the stress and struggle of everyday life. They feel like they've always got to be on top. They've always got to be in the best possible, be, you know, be seen in the best possible light. And in order to achieve that, they've got to lie. You know, so if they meet somebody, they've always got to build themselves up to be something bigger you know and the narcissistic uh, sociopath they lie simply because they have this internal desire to uh, 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 be better than other people to, to, to be superior and uh, I just think it's sad I think it's sad you know and I'm pretty sure that you guys have experience with these kind of people too but it's crazy these people literally just make up stuff but peace to the gods and nerves you know what I mean I'm gonna get back at you